Hi everyone, we're here from Planned Parenthood today to talk to you all about consent and how to communicate what you want. Before we dive in, we want to quickly introduce ourselves. Mallory. I'm Mallory. And I'm Giovanni. So today we're going to talk to you all about understanding consent and how to effectively communicate what you want. It seems like consent is talked about a lot these days, but do we really understand what it is and what it might look like or sound like? Let's find out by watching this video. While this video is funny, we hope that you take consent seriously. We'll talk right after the video. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea, thank you then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, then you could make them a cup of tea or not, but be aware they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important part, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you are entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say no thank you, then don't make them tea at all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes, please. That's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea. Now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time that it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind. And you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they're unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea. And they can't answer the question, do you want tea? Because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea. And they said yes. But in the time it took you to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down. Make sure the unconscious person is safe. And this is the important part again. Don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they're safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it going, but you wanted tea last week. Or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat going, but you wanted tea last night. But if you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you're able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand it when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. So based on this video, it seems like consent is something that's really straightforward and e like easy to understand. But when we think about tea, you know, we would obviously acknowledge that it's ridiculous to think of ourselves pouring tea down someone's throat or you know, showing up around their place uninvited to offer them tea. So, you know, th these confusing moments are why we like to break down consent even further when we're talking about something like that. So when we're talking about um, consent in terms of sex, we like to break down um, consent into five different categories uh, called fries, because, you know, who doesn't like fries? So the first category is F. Or freely given, R reversible, I inform, E enthusiastic, and S specific. So uh, when we're talking about freely given, meaning like uh, under no circumstances are you uh, coerced, are you manipulated into saying yes? So it's completely your choice. Um, you cannot be manipulated, or you can't be under any sort of influence while drunk or high. An example of freely given is yes or yes, I really want this. Next category is reversible, right? So meaning you can change your decision at any given point. 
It doesn't matter if you've already had sex with a person, you can take it back. Even if you're in the middle of having sex, you can change at any point, at any given point. Now, uh, this may sound like, I want to do this, but not right now. Or, I don't want to do this anymore. Next is informed. That means everyone knows exactly what they're getting into, whether it's the kind of sex you're going to have or the sexual history of your partners. It's important to be honest. Asking for information can sound like, are you using birth control? When were you last tested? What do you mean by hooking up? And enthusiastic. It means you're excited. So it should sound like, oh my God, yes. Um, <laughs> it won't sound like crickets or um, someone saying, no, don't stop, um, I guess. This is also where you should be paying attention to body language. So do they seem into it or do they seem nervous or bored? Finally, there's specific. Saying yes to one thing, like let's make out in my bedroom, doesn't mean someone is saying yes to anything more than making out. Signing up for making out is not signing up for sex. Likewise, if there's something specific that you want, you gotta ask for it. So we think it's important to pay attention to someone's words and their body language. When in doubt, stop and ask the person, are you sure? Are you good? Should we slow down? And is this still okay? Make sure y'all are making eye contact. That's so important. Are, and pay attention to what their body is doing. Are they pulling away? Are they leaning in? All of these are indicators that, you know, they may or may not be into what's happening. Don't ignore the intuition you feel, that feeling in your belly, and watch out for those nonverbal cues. So now we're going to talk about how to check for consent, both verbally and non-verbally. We're going to show you some scenarios where consent is not given and how the situation was handled by both people. Even though it may not seem like it, it happens to everyone. It turns out that our crush doesn't like us back or our partner has different limits than we do. There's no way around it. Dealing with rejection or sexual frustration can be hard, but it's super important to handle these situations with respect. Once you know a person isn't cool with what you're asking, stop asking. Nobody likes to be pushed to doing something they don't want to do, and pressure can really ruin a relationship. It's important not to make the other person feel bad for saying no either. So what should we do now? I should probably get to bed. I kind of have a big day tomorrow. Yeah, I'm tired too. It's late. You could stay here if you wanted. I should probably go home. Oh. Okay. Do you want me to call you a cab? No, I'll, I'll just walk. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. Text me when you get home. Yeah. I'll see you in class. Not getting what you want sucks, but that's life. No one owes you time, attention, or sex. So the best way to handle rejection is just be cool about it. That way you'll save face and no one gets hurt. 
What about those situations when someone really isn't all there? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. You seem pretty wasted. You need to take a nap? If your date is drunk, they can't really make active choices, so it's not consent. <laughs> okay, you're out of it. You need to sleep this off. I'm gonna put you to bed and then I'll text you tomorrow. All this consent stuff really isn't that complicated. Just pay attention to your partner's feelings and respect their limits. No pressure, no drama, no problem. Check out our other videos on how to talk the talk when it comes to sex. So we can see from this video, and I mean, many of us might feel the same way, that being rejected sucks, right? So we saw how many people handled these different situations in the video, and we realized it can hurt both emotionally and physically. So thinking about things that we saw in that video emotionally, right? Most people kept their cool, they weren't forceful, and they found a way to bounce back graciously. Physically, we see them accepting some alternatives, like the G-rated selfie, um, and we see um, the last couple there, the person let the other person go to bed, by acknowledging that they had a lot to drink and that was not the right time for them to be engaging. So even if you end up like the guy from the second scenario, the couple that was sitting on the couch, um, we acknowledge we realize that blue balls is a real thing um so remember you can always take care of that yourself you don't need to rely on someone else to handle that for you and the most important thing that we can say is no one owes you time attention or sex so as much as getting rejection sucks and it's very difficult it can be even more difficult uh, be uh to be the person doing the rejecting right saying is uh, saying no really is not an easy thing so we're going to teach you a technique that can make saying no just a little easier despite being uncomfortable and since it's corona season and we're going through a pandemic right now we're going to teach you uh, uh through a scenario like what saying no can be like so the technique is called swat and the scenario is like you, your friend's about to come into your car, but he doesn't have a mask. So we're gonna break down the technique step by step. Okay, so the first is S, stands for say no. So, sorry. so your friend approaches your car and it's, it stops and you realize that your friend doesn't have, have a mask. No, you can't get in my car without a mask on. But I don't have a mask. You know I don't have the Rona. Then next up is W. You explain why. This is where you offer an explanation as to why you want to stay safe. You don't have the Rona. How do you know that? Did you get tested? No. I'm not trying to get sick. No. I, I feel fine, though. Next up is A. This is where you provide an alternative or like a safe compromise between the two. Listen, I've got a bandana. You can wrap it around your face if you still want the ride. Fine, fine, whatever. And finally, T is when you talk it out. You give a proper example and you talk about your feelings as to why your decision is important. Thank you. You know I live with my grandma, so I can't take any risks. Of course not. Of course not. I totally understand. So now you've seen and heard us use the SWAT technique and have a better understanding of how easy it could be. We do recognize that this isn't easy for everyone, so if you ever do need us or have questions, please be sure to contact us. In closing, this is how you can get a hold of us. If you're looking to make an appointment, you can go to 1-800-230-PLAN or PlannedParenthood.org to make an appointment. You can also check us out on Instagram, send us a DM if you want. Our account is Sarcastic Sex Ed. And if you're not looking to talk to a real life human, you can chat with our chat bot, Rue. Rue can answer all sorts of questions for you and you can even browse 
questions that other people have asked and see their answers. So check out rue.plannedparenthood.org for more. Thank you.